what's going on in the brain. I won't go into this in detail because Gee's given you a good talk on the neurobiology. But basically, you've got a large release of the chemical dopamine, which we know is our feel-good chemical. And this is activating the brain's natural reward system. What I find more interesting is how the brain reacts to that increasing dopamine. Now, this is an experiment by Carl Hart. And he's given people different doses of methamphetamine intravenously. And on this scale here is the good drug effects. And you can see, just looking at the high dose here, 50 milligrams per 70 kilos, you can see it, the effects come on very quickly. Within five minutes, the person's high, and they're, they're peaking at five minutes after the, um, the drug's been given. Over on the right-hand side is the plasma concentration. Five minutes is still quite low. It doesn't peak till three hours. What happens by three hours over here? person's already coming down. So basically, at the point where their plasma level is peaked, their brain has already gone, hello, what's going on here? Backtracked, and I'm going to compensate for that, and we call that acute behavioral tolerance. With repeated use over time, and very heavy use, this is what happens. You just feel like you need to have ice to function. I couldn't get out of bed without a smoke of ice. My life evolved around this pipe. I'll clean it. I'll go crazy if someone touched it. The come downs were just disgusting. The paranoia, hearing things, a delusional state. Just thinking about where my next hit of ice was going to come from. So what's happening in the brain at this state is shown here in the nucleus accumbens region. So you can see here in a healthy person, you've got lots of dopamine binding shown by the red and the yellow here. But in someone who's stopped using meth, the downregulation in those dopamine receptors uh, is evident by the lack of red shown here. And that what I just described to you is what that person will be feeling like. And it does recover, but it takes some time to recover. So that's 14 months later. Now, one of the things that we've discovered recently, and this is really just a promo for my own research, um, is that those brain changes uh, are a learned response, and they're mediated at least in part by the glutaminergic glial cells in the nucleus accumbens. So this has become a target for novel therapies in treating methamphetamine addiction. And it just so happens that N-acetylcysteine, or we call it NAC, uh, is a drug which increases cysteine in that area of the brain and can restore that balance to the glutamate function. And so we're hoping that by doing that, we can reduce craving for methamphetamine, because that's what's thought to be involved with this drug seeking and relapse phenomenon. Um, and we have a trial ongoing uh, to look at that at the moment. So hopefully by next year, we'll know whether that can help people get off ice. But in terms of the addiction, it's very important because we've seen uh, an increase in Australia in the past decade or so. So this is looking back to 2003 when ice was just starting to pick up and we thought we had an ice problem then. Um, we estimate, well we knew 386,000 Australians had used meth in the past year and of those approximately 97,000 had what we call a use disorder. So using at high levels, um, symptoms of addiction or dependence. Jump to 2013 the number of people who have used the drug in the past year hasn't changed. The number of people who have a problem has increased dramatically. And that comes back to the high purity. And also this phenomenon of smoking, which you can't do with the old forms of the drug, giving a very high dose effect. Consequences looking at treatment admissions. This is the number of people who are turning up, knocking on the door of treatment centres. You can see back here in 2003, we thought we had a problem here with ICE went back down again and everyone went, oh yeah, everything's fine, well, we'll look at it now. Um, one of the serious consequences that I want to talk about today of people becoming dependent on ice is um, the psychosis, it's a particular interest of mine. So it's a very difficult condition to manage. How many of you here work with methamphetamine psychosis? So quite a few, so you know what I mean. This is a picture from St Vincent's Hospital. Um, people become highly agitated and they have to be physically and chemically restrained, which is dangerous for the patient and also difficult for the people trying to treat them. 
So I do a lot of work with people out in the community who use ice. And this is what they tell me. So I'm kind of reflecting on my experience talking to them. This is what it's like to experience methamphetamine-induced paranoia and uh, hallucinations. I kept seeing people and having conversations with people who weren't there. I sat on the tram tracks having a conversation with one day. I had no idea at the time there was no one there. My friends watched me and couldn't believe what I was doing. I think more often you get auditory hallucinations, but that's a good example of a um, visual hallucination. Um, and the paranoia is really dominant. Yeah, everyone was out to get me. I always felt like I was being followed. I'd get taxi drivers to drop me off miles away from where I was going. And then I'd walk for ages. I was afraid people were coming to get me. I swear today there's something behind it. Personally, I think it's real. So you can see that it's a subtle symptom. It's not like a, a really severe psychosis, but there is this level of conviction there and paranoia. Um, so what we do know about the psychosis in terms of the epidemiology is that the psychotic phenomena on, on the whole is much higher among people who use meth than the general population, where it's about 1 or 2%. We're looking at about 11% screening for psychosis. I think the important thing here is that the bulk of people don't... This is actually a screener for psychotic disorder. The bulk of people don't meet that threshold, and I think that's important to remember. And when we look at the severity of symptoms in the past year, this is using the brief psychiatric rating scale, so symptoms of suspiciousness, um, unusual thought content, so paranoia and hallucinations. What we see is that you know, about a quarter of people don't get any symptoms. The bulk of them get pretty mild symptoms, so they don't impact too much on their functioning, and you'll never see them in clinical practice. Um, and then we have about the other quarter who have frank hallucinations, um, delusions uh, that impact on their functioning, but they still tend to be less severe than what you'd see in someone with a psychotic disorder. Um, one of the good news things is when you're actually talking to people who are using the drug, for that group, from that perspective, most of the symptoms disappear pretty quickly. Uh, most of them will say, yeah, I, the typical story will be like, um, I had this sense that someone was following me, I thought I could see faces in my rear view mi mirror, and then like, within two hours the symptoms have dissipated, everything's gone back to normal and they're okay because they've come down off the drug. Um, they might last a day or two, but you don't get too many lasting like more than a week or a month. And when you look up here, you're looking at people who uh, have high risk factors for schizophrenia or primary psychosis. What's really interesting, and it's not well appreciated, only 11% went to hospital because of their psychotic symptoms. And they're usually these people with the more severe psychotic symptoms. Most people just stay out in the community. We also see a really strong dose relationship. And this is important because if you're looking at recreational use, it's pretty low. It's when you're looking at daily use or people using more than twice weekly, you're starting to see the risk increase. And I've basically taken out anyone who had a self-reported history of mania or schizophrenia. Now, this is cross-sectional data. Just to confirm that association, we've looked longitudinally at a group of quite heavy users, but we look at them over time, and some of them go to treatment, stop using. Um, you can see here no use. Here's when they're using 1 to 15 days in the past month, and here is 16 days in the past month. Same cohort of people. When they're not on the drug, their level, oh, this is actually violent behaviour. Sorry, wrong slide, but it's very similar for meth um, psychosis. You can see it's very low. It goes up with um, up to 15 days of use, and 16 or more it goes up again. 